Welcome to Infoblox Chalk Talks, the best practices educational series for core network services design and deployment. Hi, I'm Cricket Liu, Vice President of Architecture at Infoblox, and today we're going to talk about external authoritative name servers why they're important, and how to secure them. Now, these are, are some of the most critical name servers in your DNS infrastructure. These are the name servers that are responsible for advertising your external zone data to the internet. So that when people out there on the internet look up, for example, name, or when they send you electronic mail, it's these name servers that do the heavy lifting. These name servers are the ones that respond and give back your address records or your MX records that tell web browsers or mail servers what to do uh, to contact you. So, and what you see here is a very simple diagram showing one, two, three name servers as part of an external uh, authoritative name server infrastructure. This one down here is the hidden primary, and these two, out on two different DMZs, are external secondary name servers. These are the ones that handle the real heavy lifting of responding to non-recursive queries from name servers out on the internet. And you can see we have different ISP connections out here. This is really important because we want to have redundancy. We don't want to be in a situation where the loss of a single link to an ISP will take out all of our external authoritative uh, DNS infrastructure. Now, the hidden primary, this is where you make changes to the external zone data, and then it propagates out to these two external secondaries uh, to be queried by name servers out on the internet. So these two external secondary name servers are directly exposed to the internet. They're out there on DMZ networks. So you want to take a lot of care to secure them and make sure that they're as resistant as possible to attack. There are a couple of things you need to do with the configuration of these name servers to secure them. One is to disable recursion. If you disable recursion, you'll make them much more resistant to denial of service attacks. You'll make it impossible for people to use them in denial of service attacks against others and uh, you'll also eliminate a whole bunch of vectors for attacking them and conducting like cache poisoning attacks and so on. And you'll also want to cut off zone transfers and make sure that these name servers don't serve zone transfers to just anyone out there on the internet. Now you can see from the icons that we used here that these are running on appliances. So we've already done some of the work of securing the underlying execution platform for you. If you're running on a general purpose platform like Unix or Linux, you want to do some of that work for yourself. For example, you probably want to compile a minimal kernel. You want to disable unnecessary network services, pare down the password file, uh, apply all necessary patches, and so on. So you learned what external authoritative name servers are and why they're so critical, as well as how to secure them. Thanks very much for tuning in. See our website for other Chalk Talks, and if you have other ideas, about topics for these chalk talks, please feel free to submit them. Thank you. We hope you enjoy this chalk talk brought to you by Infoblox. For more information, call us at area code 408 625 4200. Email us at info at infoblox.com or visit us on the web at infoblox.com.